Thank you for waiting. No problem. I'm good at waiting. <clears throat> good. Good things come to those who wait. <laughs> but then she who hesitates yes. is lost. Yes. Rub the sauce bowl. So even though I'm sick of waiting. Even though I'm sick of waiting. Now, do I know this is an issue for her? No, I don't. I'm just testing it to see if it is. Um, Hercule Poirot um, on um, Agatha Christie, he said, sometimes you've got to misunderstand people so they tell you. Okay? Now, we have this thing in therapy, you're not allowed to misunderstand someone. It's great because then they correct you. Okay? And you can find out where things really are. So you just go over here and say, this is the problem. They say, no, this is really the problem. Now, sometimes when they say, no, this is really the problem, you can see that really is the problem because they emotionally respond. I'm going with the emotion rather than the statement. I go as much as possible. Yeah. So tap here and say, I'm sick of patience. I am sick of patience. Is that true? Yes. I am. Yeah. You are on. But good things come. But good things come. To those who wait. To those who wait. Among other things. Among other things. They die. <laughs> they die. <laughs> Could someone shut the curtain over there? Would that be possible? Can't really see her, your face very well. Thank you. So I know I'm going to die. And I'm going to die. The only question is... The only question is... Am I going to live first? Am I going to live first? Mm -hmm. How would you want to live? In prosperity. With abundance. Well, you mean money too. I do, I do. God, the unspiritualness in the room is <laughs> sickening. Mick said before, I hope you don't vomit, but I'm starting to feel, you know. <laughs> How would you like to have prosperity? What would that mean? What, would, what is that? I, I welcome it in all forms. Good. <sighs> so do I. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. Bring it on. But you know what? The challenge is, you ask for everything, you get nothing. The reality is you don't want all forms of prosperity because what's prosperity to one person is going to be sh stuffed to you. <laughs> what do you want? I want a lot of money. How much? This is one thing Napoleon Hill said that really helped me a lot. He said, don't just say you want to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Decide exactly how much you want to the dollar amount. I put that down. Specificity. Definiteness. I want How a much money? A million dollars. A million dollars. This year. <clears throat> this year? Oh, man. How much you got? Tap here. Two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> you can turn two thousand into a million if you compound it at a uh, hundred and fifty percent per day. Uh, no. You want to turn two thousand into a million, then you're going to run one of those infomercials or something like that. I turned $2,000 into a million in two months, rejecting myself on the internet or something like this. <laughs> How the hell are you going to earn that much money? I don't know. I don't know yet. You're going to wait for it to come. <laughs> I've been waiting. Yeah. How's it working? Not well. All right. Well, I want to try a different plan. I want to try a different plan. So what prevents you from planning, acting, doing, moving forward? Well, I really resonated with I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. I think those are big barriers. Yeah, um, they're not the barriers. The barriers are you don't do anything. Right. See, so it's like I've got to have all that before I can do all that. Not so. Yeah. Not so. Happy to say I have to. I have to. I have to. Fill in the blank. Do more. Oh, I just said, I just told you that. But what do you have to be? What do you have to, what do you have to feel worthy? Do you have to be confident? Do you have to? I have to feel confident. I have to work hard. Happy is, oh, hard. There it is. Okay. Rub the sauce box. So even though you cannot get rich without working really hard, even though you can't get rich without working really hard. And are you just lazy or something? <laughs> I'm just lazy or something. I'm just checking. I'm uh, asking you the question. No, I'm not. Are you lazy? No. 
All right, and I'm not lazy. And I'm not lazy. I'm prepared to work. I'm prepared to work. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. Even if I have to work 23 hours a day. Even if I have to work 23 hours a day. So that's not true. That's not true. Well, then how can you possibly get there if you're not prepared to give it your all? Obviously, I haven't done that. Yeah, see, it isn't that. It's actually just having a good plan. This idea that you, you know, have to be 100% whatever, it's not if you find yeah. a good plan. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to work 23 hours a day. Exactly. You don't. So you want to work how many hours? Six. Six? <laughs> My gosh. So I want to work six hours a day. I want to work six hours a day. How many days a week? Five. Five days a week. And I'm going to manifest a million dollars. And I'm going to manifest a million dollars. Out of thin air. Out of thin air. <laughs> Interesting plan. <laughs> <laughs> and how? What's the work to be? It's the area of work. Energy therapy, groups. Big groups. Big groups. <laughs> you get a million dollars, you need a few people. Yeah. Either that or it's, I'm running my exclusive program, 100,000 each. Yeah. I only need 10 of you. <laughs> yes. I'm, I, I'm, I realize I'm just really going big here when you ask these questions. I'm practicing that. Um, yeah. Now, very good. Very good. Do you mind? Um, we're just going to put a little pause in here. Okay. I'm going to make a couple of points, and we, we're going to keep working. You're going to keep working on your issue as we go through. Okay. okay? So, so keep, yeah. Here's a big thing. She's talking about an unrealistic goal, isn't she? Is it unrealistic? Yeah. Correct answer is maybe. Okay. Who's ever done a goal setting program to talk about smart goals? Okay. They're very. Um, it, a lot of people teach this. And there's, you know, S-M-A-R-T. I should have said smart goals. And the, the S is specific. And what's the M, people? M, people. Measurable. And I is? Achievable. And R is realistic. And T is time-based, have a time frame. Now, if you're talking about your goals for the next three months, next six months, maybe even the next year, this is a useful model. If you're talking about this as a model for your life, it's really dumb. Because what is achievable? If you're deciding the future based on today, then you're just going to recreate today. You're recreating the limits that already exist. The challenge is to be actually be able to see beyond that, to see something that isn't really here, that you don't even know how is going to be possible. You don't even know if it's achievable. You don't even know if it's realistic. That's where the power is because that's what's inspiring. That's what motivates you. That's what gets you going. It's like, wow. Now, um, is that million dollar goal motivating for, I don't know, I didn't even get your name again. Lisa, is that million dollar goal look to you to be motivating to her? No. Okay? So it's not the, the money, it's really something else that you want. I don't know what that is. If you have that million dollars, what's it going to give you? She said freedom. Okay? Freedom for what? Freedom from worry about paying the bills. Freedom to give to people that I love to give to. Many to people got million dollars or more, they're more worried than, than you about paying their bills because they're worried about losing it. Yes, of course. So it isn't the money that's going to give you that. So the challenge is you've got to give that to yourself. Mm -hmm. I work with the state touch rugby team. We have a touch football, I think you have over here. I don't know if it's very similar. We have real football, by the way, in my country. It's Australian yeah. rules football. <laughs> no, not soccer. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> Pussy game, you know. And, um, but um, I work with this uh, touch rugby team and uh, I asked them their goals and one guy said, I want an 1100cc motorbike. CCs is cubic centimetres, it's the size of the, uh, the engine. And um, I'm like, wow, okay. 
If you have that motorbike, what's it going to give you? He says, power. <laughs> now, here's a guy who's really big. He's, he's, he's creating an identity for himself. He doesn't see that, but he's really actually decided how he wants to be, and he isn't that. He doesn't feel that. He doesn't let himself see that, even though he has that within him. And he thinks if he has that motorbike, then he can be a powerful person. And when he gets the motorbike, you know what he's going to do? He's going to let himself for a moment feel powerful. He's going to let that feeling of power be there because powerful people have motorbikes. Okay? Just learnt that false connection. Okay? What he really wants is to feel powerful. And if he was able to actually access the power in himself, doesn't it make sense that he would naturally attract all the stuff he wants to him anyway? But he wouldn't need it for the power? False connection. So I want to know what, and if you have freedom, don't answer this question. I'm just throwing out the question right now. What's it going to give you? What is it that you want really? If you have that freedom, freedom to do what? Freedom to have what? What is it that you really want? The money may or may not give you that. May or may not. Okay? So you can test that assumption. You know, I need the money to have this. I can't do this without the money. I need. So there's a lot of people with money that are not free, and there are a lot of people with money who are free. A lot of people without money who are not free, and there are a lot of people without money who are free. The money doesn't cause the freedom. Okay? So, smart goals are really dumb to run your life on. Don't run your, your, your life based on what's achievable because we want things that are... Un we need you to set goals that are unrealistic. Like Pat O'Hearn did. You know, he really felt it. I don't know if I'm going to make this. But he's, he's, like, I've, he's come to the point where he's decided, I'm going to do this even though I don't know for sure. And the challenge is to get yourself to take that step. Now, a little bit about what we're doing here with beliefs. What I've done with each of these people is actually set up a polarity, positive, negative. Okay? Um, that's always there. There's always the other. Okay? The dark side, the light side. For some people, the light side is the dark side. Okay? For some people, focusing on the positive is actually more threatening and more upsetting than focusing on, on the negative. They're more comfortable with being a loser or whatever they see themselves as. Okay? So they're comfortable calling themselves that. They, they call, tell everybody that they are that. They wear that. You know, that's, this is me. This is my identity. Cialdini says the strongest force in the human personality then is, is to remain consistent with how you define yourself. Zig Ziglar says you will never perform consistently in a way which is inconsistent with how you see yourself. So you want to work on that stuff. Now, here's how I see the world working. Forget that polarity thing. This is necessary first. Down the bottom here is your behavior. What's causing your behavior is actually emotions. Pain and pleasure. This, this, you know, it's very sad that we're still pain, pleasure driven. We're caught up in this um, thing that says, you know, I've got to do this and not do that based on what I perceive it's going to give me in terms of pain and pleasure. Now, what's running the whole show is this BS stuff, right? And that's your belief systems. Now, I want to work with belief systems because that's where the power is. If you work with someone's phobia and you relieve that, I want to know what does it mean about them because you can have one person and the phobia just goes away in a few seconds and it's, you know, the one one-off wonder sort of thing, and other person, that phobia is them. Because I have this phobia, I'm a hopeless person, or because I can't do this, that means I'm hopeless or useless or whatever. So it, it's, it's not just a phobia, it's them, it's their identity. Okay? So I want to know what it means about them. Every time if someone's got presenting a thing, I want to underline what's their belief about this, what's their belief about themselves. There are different types of beliefs. There are specific beliefs. There are global beliefs, there are rules beliefs, and there are top of the tree identity beliefs. Now, specific belief, okay? I might have a belief about Pat. Pat is a such and such, okay? That's going to affect how I deal with Pat. But it's not going to affect how I deal with, is it Rue? Yeah. It's not going to affect how I deal with you because of belief about Pat. But if I have a belief about all women, that's a global belief, and it covers a whole area of my life. Okay? A belief about all women is going to affect how I respond or treat every woman in the room. And you see the power, if you can actually treat that belief, you can wipe out a whole bunch of stuff, change your whole life. Now, rules beliefs are ones that typically come up in relationships. 
and uh, David does a lot of good, great, wonderful work on relationships. If you have a chance to read his stuff and attend his seminars, absolutely magnificent. He's taught me some of the, 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 the golden stuff I know about relationships I learned from him, not because he told me it, because he lives it. Anyway, in relationships, you learn rules about how you should be treated or how people should treat each other, and you usually don't find that out until you step on the other person's rules or break them. Okay? But up here, the top of the tree, are your I am beliefs. And everything that's causing problems in your life is what happens after the I am. Everything. Even if what happens after the I am is a positive, it's still an attachment to an idea you are not that. But it's something that you've become connected to in this incarnation. Okay? I didn't say it wasn't useful in some ways, I'm just saying there's much more than this. Okay? So always, always, always when I'm working with someone, I want to know what does this say about, the, the, uh, what's the I am? Okay? So always I'll be looking for what's the I am underneath this problem. So it's like, am I lazy? Okay? Am I impatient? Am I dumb? Am I undeserving sinner? <laughs> and if I think that that's part of the person's belief system, I'm now going to act as if that's true for the sake of the exercise. And we're going to tap on that as if it's true. And when you do that, you're holding the thing in, you're, you're focusing on it, you're attuned to it, while you do the tapping, the tapping releases the attachment. That's what I believe is happening. Does that make sense? Yes. A couple of people have said yes. I need auditory, okay? Yes. Very much. Thank you. All right. So we have about five minutes to go. Let's um, just finish off with this. We're going to do some work, more work after the break on manifestation, and I'll take you through a little process there. Um, but I was going to say before, we, I'm setting up a polarity. It's always there in my mind anyway, okay? that there's the, the light side, the dark side, whatever, okay? I am this versus I am that. Um, someone give me a problem or an issue. Someone go to a microphone right now, someone quickly, one person who's prepared to tell me a problem or an issue of yours. Any issue, doesn't matter. Go ahead. There's a belief that I have that the more successful that I become in doing the things that I want to do, that I will become distant, more separated from my family. Okay, very good. I mean, not very good, but thank you for that. <laughs> yes, stay there. Um, so success huh, equals separation. That's a crappy definition. Now, of not only by the way. not only my immediate family, but the family of oh my God. culture, my yes. ethnicity. Yes. All of that. You yeah, see yeah. who's here. Yeah. Okay. So if the only way to be successful is to leave all that. I, I'm scared. It, I, I'm going to be away from all them. Yes. Okay. Now, um, what's the total opposite of that? Is that it's not true. Well, that well, I will be more then connected. What is true? Uh huh. I will Success. be more connected. equals connection. Now, we don't have time to do very much with this. I've only got a couple of minutes. Uh -huh. But um, we like to do a couple of things. First of all, we like to do the tapping on the negative idea and all the connected ideas to that. All right? Also like to do the tapping on the positive idea and the ideas connected to that. When you're tapping on the positive, there's always the tail end, as Gary talks about. But sometimes the thing itself, it's not a tail end, the thing itself is a negative. Does that make sense? The positive itself is a negative. Okay? Mm, yes, yes. Now, um, so one way to start working is just to grab the negative belief and start tapping on it. Okay, rub this horse pot, say, even though success equals separation. Even though success equals separation. And if I become really successful. And if I become really I'm successful. I'm going to be totally disconnected from my people. I'm going to be totally disconnected from my people. And everyone that's really important to me. And everyone that's really important to me. Tap here. So I don't want disconnection. I don't want disconnection? Yeah. I don't want disconnection. And success equals disconnection. And success equals disconnection. So I don't want success. So I don't want success. Success causes disconnection. Success causes disconnection. And if I get successful? And if I get successful? I'm going to lose connection. I'm going to lose connection. So we could just tap on that, okay? 
and some things will come up for you with that and, and you know if we had time would we'll, we'll go into that okay mm -hmm. but let's just have a look at the other idea okay and, and what I often do as an exercise is say okay let's do tapping on the positive it's similar to what Pat Carrington does in her choices things is do the positive do the negative and do interchangeable positive negative okay I'm interested particularly in which one causes the most okay yeah. rub the sore spot so even though success really is about connection even though success really is about connection. And if I was truly successful. And if I was truly successful. I'll be more connected. I will be more connected. Because for me, success is connection. Because for me, success is connection. I accept myself. I accept myself. So success is connection. Success is connection. I want connection. I want connection. So I want success. So I want success. A yeah, little bit of hesitation. Yeah. Happy. Success equals connection. Success equals connection. It's a very simple way of doing this. We could get more sophisticated. But let's just go interchangeable. Rub the sore spot. Say, even though success is not about connection. Even though success is not about connection. Success is about totally disconnectedness. Success is about totally disconnection. There is such a word. I just made if, it up. Okay. I accept myself. I accept myself. Even though that's not true. Even though that's not true. Success is really about connection. Success is really about connection. And more success equals more connection. And more success equals more connection. I accept myself. I accept Even myself. Even though that's a lie. Even though that's a lie. And success isn't about connection at all. Success isn't about connection at all. I accept myself. I accept myself. Success is not about connection. Success is not about connection. If you're successful, you're disconnected. If you're successful, you're disconnected. That's not true. That's not true. Success is really about connection. Success is really about connection. If I'm not connected, I'm not successful. If I'm not connected, I'm not successful. That's not true. That's not true. I really want success. I really want success. And success is not connection. Success is not connection. So we can play around with those ideas. Now, it's going to sort of short circuit your wiring diagram and it's probably lead to a confusion state, okay? But it causes yeah, you to feel sort dizzy. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. but that's how it is. That's how it is. My time is well and truly up, isn't it? Thank so we're going to leave, we're going to put a pause in there and we're going to come back. But I just want to leave you with that idea. The reality of, of life as it is, as I understand it, is not an either or. The reality is that you have both of those competing beliefs in your body at the same time. That's the truth. So it's not like it's one or the other. The reality is you might hold one to be seven out of ten true and the other one is six out of ten true. And depends on which day, which one's winning. And Churchill called this internal civil war. You know, we have this competing parts. But the, the, we're, I'm trying to paint the picture as it really is, is the warring parts, okay? And just do tapping on that. Hold that paradox in mind as you do the tapping. All right, we need to have a break now. We don't have very long, and we want to, we want to make this useful. Let me finish this off. Well, I'm really giving you part of a picture here about our model of treating beliefs. See, when you, um, when you treat both sides of this, you realise the whole thing is an illusion. And you rise above it. We had a, a gentleman in our Perth seminar and uh, his first thing was, I'm, I'm just an ordinary person. And uh, so we did some tapping on that statement. What was, David, what was the other side to that for him? I'm exceptional. So then he came out with, I'm exceptional. And he really liked that idea. But then a little bit later on in the, in the seminar, I just decided to provoke him about that. And he went away and he did some tapping on that. And he said, yeah. He said, I realized that I was just as attached to that idea as I was to the alternative idea. So now, what is he? Confused, yes, but he's confused on a much higher level. <laughs> now, I'm starting to see why Gary shuts the doors. Can we please sit down, everyone who wants to move? It's a bit distracting for me. Um, so, where were we? Being confused on a higher level. See, when you, when you realise, when you have that realisation is what Gary's talking about, then... Um, you still realize that we're in a material world here and that we can manifest things and so on. Manifestation is fine, you know, material things are fine. But you never go back to that other idea totally. You always have that realization. It's like when I did my self-acceptance work. I had a shift that I've never gone back to um, the problem being me. It's like I'm here and all these problems are out there. And yes, sometimes I, I you know, I do get, you know, 
get upset, annoyed, whatever. But it's never in the same depth. You know, it doesn't cut in the same way. Because it isn't me, there's a realisation there. So that's what we're after, ultimately, I believe. So can you still manifest a million dollars? Sure. Jim Rohn says the purpose for manifesting a million dollars or whatever you want to manifest is the person that you become. Once you do that, you can throw everything else away because it's, it's what you've become that's important. Of course, if you want to spend it, you could do that too. You know, why not? Anyway, so we like to work on these polarities and um, see what comes out of that. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes what comes out of that is not necessarily rising above and seeing the, the whole thing as just an illusion, but just saying, well, no, I thought I was actually here, but I really am here. And that's good too. Because you sort out where you really fit rather than having this distorted view. You, you have a, 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 a position that's actually got some testy reality testing associated with it. It's not just from your own emotional hooks and so on and you therefore aren't seeing things clearly. Does this make sense? I haven't yet had an opportunity for questions and profound thoughts and comments. If anybody wants to make a question or a comment or a profound thought or an, or an objection. Am I I have a question about when you ask people about where they are when you're looking for the polarity, what you do when they're giving you where they think they should be yes. rather than where they really are. How do you help them to sort that out? Okay, where's somewhere that you should be? Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to rope you in. Uh, <laughs> but since you're here, I can't think of a it's good harder to talk about than it is to just do for me. So um, where's somewhere that... You're trying to, how do you work out, you know, where to work in terms of this? Is that what you're saying to me? Sure, like, um, if somebody feels that they should be more ordinary, more plain, more concrete, down to earth, yes. but what they really want is to be exceptional. They want to stand out different from the yes. rest. But So you ask them, you well, know. Within my model, I'm actually going to stick within the frame they give me to start with. Okay. okay? And in actual fact, that's a box that they put themselves in. And I'm going to actually make that box tighter. Okay. Okay, this is just the style that we use. It's a bunch of techniques associated with it, but essentially it's, it's a constricted way of thinking. So I'm going with the, with the constriction. So I'm going to be saying, even though you're completely ordinary and you know, success is not for you and all the stuff that I think they're running on. Okay. okay. And I'll just feed that in and have them tapping on that. And what tends to come out of that process is the objections and the other side to that. And no, I have this side to me as well, and that's not all there is to me. It's... Uh, Frank Farrelly, who created provocative therapy, he says, global perceptions lead to global response sets and behaviours. In other words, if you have a, a belief, I am shy, that cuts across everything. Okay, so you take that everywhere. everywhere. So if, if that were an issue for you, I would start working with you on I am shy, and I would have you be shy everywhere. Okay. okay? And then you start to differentiate, no, I'm not shy everywhere, there's these areas where I can do this, but there's these areas, you start to differentiate the global set down. And then that leads to differentiated response repertoires, behaviours and things. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And you start saying, well, really, that's just an issue here. This is where I've got the issue. This is where I want to work on it. It's going out into big groups or it's presenting or whatever it is. Okay? Th thank you. It's not me that has to shift. Okay. Anyone else? Dumb questions? <laughs> dumb question is one you don't ask, so... All right, nobody has even a dumb question. All right, let's move on. We could do some more with this, but I'm aware of the time, and I want to talk about manifestation. I mentioned Mark Victor Hansen, and I, I love his definition of success. He says, success is, is creating a state of mind that allows you to do whatever it is that you want. Now, I believe it's a state of mind, body, emotion, okay? Energy. And when you get into that manifestation state, it all just happens. It's about, you know, resonance. It's about attunement. It's about vibration. It's about putting yourself on the right frequency, and it all just comes to you. We got into this state last year. We were running around America doing our stuff. And uh, David and I were sitting down talking. We are like, well, where would we like to go, you know? Where would we re people were starting to say, would you like to come here and stuff. So he said, where would we really like to go? And he says, I'd, I'd like to go to New Orleans. Within the hour, a woman came up. She said, we'd love to get you guys down to New Orleans. <coughs> I said, well, I'd like to go to Orlando. Because then I could take my kids with me, take my family with me. 
My aim is to do three international trips a year, and I'm one of those, take my family with me, either my wife and my kids or my wife. We did that last year, first time she came to Munich. It was fantastic. And um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Orlando. So there we are. I said, Orlando, that'd be great. Next day, next day, Stephen comes up. He says, I'd like to get you guys down to Orlando. Where the hell is that coming from? You know? Now, let me tell you where it came from. It came from all those years ago when I decided that I wanted to do this without knowing how. My initial goal was to come to America to learn the stuff from Frank Farrelly and to travel around. And We went to the Grand Canyon. We came, I drove through Flagstaff. First time I ever drove on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, you know what we manifested? We manifested six months of cleaning offices. We found this job cleaning offices and we cleaned offices and then we went home and then the sun came up and then we went to work. We worked all day and we did that for six months. And at that time, that was fine. And uh, we made it. And I got here and I actually remember driving away from the Grand Canyon. We had to, had to get to Phoenix and um, there was a big snowstorm coming in, so it was, it was really exciting, you know. And uh, we don't have snow where I live. And um, so the first time I saw snow was when I come over here. And I just got hit with this feeling, here we are. Here we are. We're doing it. You can do what you want. Ultimately, you know, from all that way back there, it was like a big, big dream for me. And um, so then we did that, and I said to my wife at the end of this, I said, let's do, let's do it again. Let's go to Europe. And we went, the next trip, we went to Europe, and we came over to America because I wanted to study with my guru. And um, I said, but let's do it easier. It's got to be an easier way than cleaning offices. And, you know, a few years ago, I said another goal, I said, I want to I get paid lots of money to travel all around the world, catching up with my friends, having a good time, making a difference. Why do you think we're here? Now, when I set that goal, I had, it was still part of me that objected. They said, oh, how are you going to do that? You can't really do that. Can you really do that? I'm not sure, etc. I didn't really know the how. And now it's just started to happen. So there's some point of actually making the decision. Now I want to take you through a process, if I may, for your own manifestation. Now before we do that, who hates goal setting? Okay, someone who hates goal setting, go up to a, a, a microphone and tell me why you hate goal setting. Go ahead. No, you sit down, Pat. You've had enough. <laughs> no, you don't deserve it. Someone else who deserves it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, for anybody who wants to know what I'm about, I'm externalizing that part of her that's holding her back and being that for her so she can be angry at me. You just treat this rubber sore spot. So even though I'm really irrationally angry at Steve... <laughs> Yeah, okay. All right. Anyway, you can trap on that. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't like goal setting in part because setting a goal limits you and locks you into a particular reality, and that may or may not be the best thing for me. Or there might be something better out there than just this narrow little goal I'm trying to set. Yes. So you have to... So making decisions limits your choices. Yes. So you have to leave everything open and have nothing. Well, no, you don't have nothing. You have whatever comes, whatever, have whatever, whatever manifests. You can have whatever comes... Yes. That's within a certain level. But you can't have anything that requires dedication and focus and investment and time. Maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah, I'm just, I just like to play the... We're just playing around with the idea, yes. okay? And to see what, what, what you react to about that, okay? Yes. So right, we, I'll just stick within the frame that you have. Rub this sore spot, say, even though... Even though... Making decisions... Making decisions. Limits your choices. Limits my choices. And I want to be unlimited. And I want to be unlimited. So I'm not going to choose anything definite. So I'm not going to choose anything definite. I want definite. to leave everything in the realm of possibility. I'm going to live everything in the realm and of I'm possibility. And I'm going to take what comes. And I'm going to take and what I comes. And I sure hope something good comes. And I sure hope something good comes. And I accept myself. And I accept myself. Even though I don't want to be stuck to any one thing. Even though I don't want to be stuck to any one thing. Up here, say goal setting makes you stuck. Goal setting keeps you stuck. Well, there you go. Oh. Makes you stuck. Keeps Makes you stuck. stuck. Making choices. Making choices. Limits the possibilities. Limits possibilities. To whatever's predetermined. To whatever's predetermined. And I don't want to know what's happening next. I don't want to know what's happening next. I'd prefer to be up in the air. I'd prefer to be up in the air. 
It's a lot more interesting that way. It's a lot more interesting that way. I don't want to know what's going to happen. I don't want to know what's going to happen. What's your reaction to that? Well, who does anyway? <laughs> well, <laughs> hands up, who would like to know that they have a million dollars heading into their bank account, you know, in the next week? Some people, yeah, they, they, they're just their irrational need for security that they have. Yes. Okay. And that's, see, at the end of the day, if he deals with all of these interchangeable bits and whatever, and he makes a real choice to be that, without having to be that, without a bit that's holding back, okay, without any part of you that's objecting to not having goals or to not being able to manifest something in that area, then that's fine. So tell me, when I mention that, does that bring anything up for you? You know, I, I'm sorry, I, I spaced out with you. Yes. Yes. Tap here. So I spaced out. I spaced out. I didn't want to hear any of that shit. <laughs> I didn't want to hear any of that shit. No, I, did, you, no I didn't want to hear it. And if you say anything bad again... <laughs> If there's anything bad again... I'm not going to listen again. I'm not going to listen again. I'm not interested in what you have to say. I'm not interested in what you have to say. I'm only interested in what I feel. I'm only interested in what I feel. And what I feel is true. And what I feel is true. There is an alternative reality. There is an alternative reality. But it isn't as interesting. But it's not, it isn't as interesting. Take a deep breath. Just playing around with ideas, okay? What reaction did you have to that? Um, I am interested in what you have to say. Part of difficulty in my making decisions is that there are so many possible and alternative realities. Yes. And, and what if and, you make and, the wrong one? What if I make the wrong one? What if you miss out on what could be really good because you went for something that you thought could be good? Well, I'm in a space where everything is good. All right. Then you don't have to do anything. Well, you still have to, you have to get up in the morning, you have to go to work, you have to make money, you have to do things, Why? but... If everything's good, you well, can see it's... God in your bedroom. Right. <laughs> well, everything is good, but it's better to have a roof over your head than to be on the street homeless. Sounds like a goal to me. Shit. <laughs> Grab the sauce pot. <laughs> I don't need anything except this ashtray. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great, you know? We think we get to a point. Isn't it funny that um, this is not you. I'm just bringing a general issue that I see often here about, um, you know, we've got this level that we allow ourselves to be at because that means that we're not unspiritual like those rich, nasty people, okay? But in actual fact, if you live in this society, you have more riches than 98% of the world, why have you decided that level is okay and that level is spiritual? Why don't you give away everything? You want to be really spiritual. When Jesus did that, the guy went, oh. <laughs> and he went away. He should have done a bit of tapping, actually. <laughs> what happened next? Because this is a key phrase for those of you who have this spiritual issue. What happened next? Ha, ha, ha. He said they crucified him. No, what happened next at that point of the story, okay? Because what happened was he said, it's harder for... It's easier for a rich man to go through, you know, the camel to go through the eye of a needle and, and people say, well, what he really meant was the gate, which is called the eye of the needle, but then you have to go through it and you've got to bow and that's what he really meant. Now, what if he really meant it really is, you know, you've got to go through the eye of a needle, it's easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Oh, dear. <laughs> Who knows what happened next? Put your hand up if you know what happened next. What was said next? You don't read your Bible, you naughty boys and girls. <laughs> what was said next? Come to the microphone, please. If my memory doesn't fail me, it's seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Well, that's a very good phrase, but it isn't what come next, okay? <laughs> Give her a round of applause for trying, okay? At least she had a go. The rest of you are heading for hell, all right? Now, 
what happened next was the, the disciples were listening to this and he's just said to this guy who has, by the way, been fulfilling all the commandments, doing all the good stuff, and because um, he, he asked the question, what have I got to do to have eternal life? He says, follow the commandments. He said, I've done this since I was a youth. Good on you. He says, well, you know, what should I really do? Well, all right, if you really want to be perfect, give up everything. Give it away and come follow me. The guy's like, hmm, okay, I don't think so. So then he says, then he says, it's easier for a camel to go through an iron needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. And what happened next was the disciples said, oh, well, they didn't say, oh, my God. <laughs> they may have said that. Who the hell can be saved then? They didn't say who the hell either. Just reinterpreting it for a modern audience, okay? <laughs> Who can be saved? And then he said, with men, this is impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. Isn't that interesting? I don't know many people who read beyond the bit that said, you can't get in. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> Ask someone else who listened. <laughs> who can hear my accent? I have to apologise for that, by the way. All right, go ahead. Am I on? Uh, yeah. She said, I have set goals, yeah. I have set big goals for myself, and then I get really, really scared. Yes. Because I'm afraid of finding out if, I've, if I really have it, if yep. I'm good enough. Yes. You know, um, I'm going to find out who I am. Yes. Or well, you're going to find out that you aren't good enough. Exactly. Yes. Okay, tap here. So I'm not going to be... I'm going to find myself out. I'm going to find myself out. I won't be good enough. I won't be good enough. So I better not set the goal. So I better not set the goal. Now, what we do here is when, before you do any manifestation process, do the tapping on your objections, internal objections, uh, things you associate to, the, to, to this, whatever they are. So the minute you brought that up, there's about three different things you could have started tapping on, okay? Mm -hmm. Even though I'm, I may not succeed, even though I don't think I'm good enough for this, whatever the things are that come up for you, you do the tapping on. Now, what I didn't tell you when you were doing your work on beliefs is you can tap on the belief statement and just tap on the belief statement will, will do something for you, but ultimately you want to go to those legs, the significant emotional experiences. The question is, where did you learn that? Who taught you that? And if you can go back and do tapping on those incidents where you learned that you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you know, rich is greedy, you don't deserve it, whatever it is, then you're going to get somewhere a lot quicker. Okay? Specific events. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, I'm able to do a little bit in the way of goal setting and then I'll look at it later and yes. say, well, okay, but you know, a certain amount of time has passed and I don't see anything happening. Yes. So, did I do it wrong? Yes. Am I not giving it up enough? You know? Yes. What am I not doing right? That's my big thing. Is Maybe what am not, I not that doing you're not right? doing right. Maybe that you are not right. That's possible. Okay. And you can tap on that. So, mm -hmm. even though I'm not right. Even though I'm not right. And I need to be right before I can make things right. And I need to be right before I can make things right. Which means I need a cortical transplant. Which means I need a cortical transplant. But from who? And a completely rewired personality. And a completely rewired personality. Then I can be successful. Then I can be successful. Any I'm offers? No. Because only okay. smart people are successful or people who are this are successful or whatever that is for you. Does that make sense? Yes. So when you do this and the objections come up is the time. Sit down, ready to do this, and the objections will come up. Okay? And whatever they are, you can just start tapping on the objection. That's actually a belief. Then you can then you ask yourself the question or you could do this with somebody else. Where did you learn that? Okay? Yeah. Where did that idea come from? Where did you... What, what, who taught you that? Okay? And then go I'll back and do some, some ideas, yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay, thank you for now. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, let's do this. Let's get you to do this process. I want you to just, um, when I start doing goal setting, I know we, you know, if we were doing this as an exercise and we do this in our seminars, we actually will bring up the objections and we'll have people do tapping on that. 
let's just assume we've done a little bit of that because um, we don't have time to, to do that right now. But the next step is to do what I call a splurge. And that's where you bypass your thinking mind and you just commit to writing non-stop for a particular period of time. Everything that comes into you, uh, your mind or whatever comes out of the pen um, that you want to do, have, be. Now, I don't need to labour this distinction, I'm sure, uh, that most people want to focus on what they want to do or what they want to have, but the reality is it's about what you, who you are and what you're going to become as a result of this. So why not go straight there and start there? Because if you, if you focus on that, then all of this will be added to you. Okay? That's the way it works. And it will come to you naturally. People will come out of the woodwork and you will be, wow, how did I get this person? You know, how did this... How do I get this connection? You know? That's where it comes from. Well, where does it come from? Who knows? Out of the ether. Let's do this. Let me get you to do a splurge. You only have a few minutes, so I'm going to give you three minutes. Write down everything you can think of that you would like to do, have, be. You are allowed to have things. You might want to do some things. You've got to keep yourself amused while you're here. But what do you want to be ultimately? You can do all of them. You have to start with doing. You say, I want to be smart. <laughs> I want to be smart enough to have a successful business. Just write it down and commit to writing it down. By the way, writing it down is only one way to start the manifestation process. Manifestation starts when you take it from inside yourself and put it out into the world. One way is writing it, another way is speaking it, another way is painting it, another way is sculpting it, etc. It has to come out into the world. Okay, we don't have very long, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you to... I'll give you 30 seconds more. What you write down the next 30 seconds, you can have, do or be. The rest, you can't. Don't write it down, you can't have it. Can't have it. Either. And stop. Now, we want more than we can possibly have. Our wants are endless. In fact, we need to treat ourselves for this. Stephen Wright says, says, I think it was Mark Twain said before him, you can't have everything, where would you put it? You know? I say, well, give me a chance, you know? <laughs> Reality is I don't want to be a jet pilot. I want a whole bunch of things, okay? So there is a prioritization process. See, these aren't, the stuff that just came out then is not necessarily, none of them are necessarily goals, they're just ideas. You're, you're going to turn some of them maybe into goals, but they're not goals yet, they're just ideas, okay? The way that you, you take them and make, some, make them into goals is in actual fact creation of an attachment. Okay? But it's a worthwhile attachment. It's a path with a heart. Okay? It's something that comes from you, from within you. So, let's go very quickly to the process. By the way, who's got some scary goals in there? I'm always interested to know. Who's put down some goals that are a little bit scary? Like if you think about them, you think, whoa, I'm not sure if I could... Put your hands up high. I want to see who the courageous ones are. Okay, very good. Scary, well, scary, exciting, scary, you know. But they sort of make you think, whoa, don't know for sure if I can do this, you know. This would be great, but I'm not sure, you know. I love those sort of guys. I really love working with that sort of stuff. Because that's where you're going to really stretch yourself, Okay. 
If you don't have that, then you might be doing smart goals, but I'm wondering whether that's the way you want to run your life. Okay? It keeps you secure, but it's, you know, it's within a certain level. It may not be where you want to go ultimately. All right. Um, so we've got to do some sort of prioritizing. And the other thing is we've got to make them into more definite goals and commitments. So what I'd like you to do is to go through your list. I would like you to circle the top four of those things that you've written. These are the ones that you really think are the most important. Now, you can't circle all of them. <laughs> I truly believe you can have anything you want, but not everything. And everything isn't what you really want. Or need. So I also want you to go through, and I also want you to decide when. Now this is where the rubber starts to hit the road, and this is where some of you will get a little bit of a cold feeling. Because when you say when, you start to make it more definite. Okay? So I want you to go through your list. I want you to decide when you're going to do that by, when you're going to have that guy by, when you want to be that by. Just put it down very quickly. The cliche, but it's true, is a goal is really a dream with a deadline. So many people, I cannot tell you the amount of people I've met in your country who tell me I'm going to go to Australia one day. One day. We have that in Australia. We're going to, people are going to go around Australia in a camper van. That's what they're going to do, one day. Unfortunately, some of them leave it until too late. So if someone says that they're going to do that, I say, wow, when are you going to do that? And I know whether it's really a goal or whether it's just an idea. If you can't say when, you may be not going to. Now, there's a lot of debate about this in the goal-setting world. People you know, say you shouldn't set definite dates. Um, I'm for the definite dates. Let's give you a little bit more of this process. You've gone through and you've, you've got a list of these things. I would get you now to pick one of those. And I would have, have you go through stages of commitment. I want you to do this very, very quickly because we only have a couple of minutes. By my watch, actually, we have eight minutes, not five. Is that correct? All right. Now, this is the levels of commitment we go through. It starts from the dream and the I wish. A lot of people call things goals that are just wishes. Okay? My mum said, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Still true today. The next level of commitment is I want. Napoleon Hill said, desire is a starting point of all achievement. Desire is actually good. Some people are upset about their desires. They think they're bad. Okay? Well, you can treat yourself for that. The next level is I plan to. And the next level is I will. Now, before you manifestors get upset with me, of course, the next level is I am. Okay? But I believe you have to go through I will to get to I am. And if you don't make that step, then you'll always have this false thing. You'll always be disconnected from that because you really aren't that, if you like, in, inside yourself. It doesn't feel right there. Okay? Now, I want you to think, pick one goal, and I need you to do this very quickly. I need you to find a person next to you, and I want you to actually state your goal as an I wish. So if my goal was to travel all around the world and you know, get paid millions of dollars, I would say, I wish I could travel all around and get paid millions of dollars. And then your partner will do the same thing with their goal. Then when they have done that, you will go to, I want. I want to get paid millions of dollars to travel all around the world helping people. And they'll do the same with their goal. Then you, will, then you will say, I plan to get paid millions of dollars traveling all around the world helping people. And then you will say, I will do this. Now, when you do this, you're going to notice that some of those are going to cause a little more stress and tension than others. For some of you, it'll be the I plan to step. For others, it will be the I will step. And that's where you need to do your tapping. Okay? So I'm just opening this up to you. And I want you to notice the difference in feeling. Go ahead. You've got two minutes for this. Go in a threesome. If you're out on your own, find a threesome. 
Excuse me. Stop. Here. Okay, now I realise that some of you are not finished with this, but I never promised I would take you through the entire process, just give you something to go on with. So I noticed some of you doing some tapping when those barriers came up, good choice, okay? I suggest you go do this as an exercise. You can sit down with yourself, you can sit down with a friend. And when the objection comes up to, I plan to, because I'm not a planner or I'm not an organizer or I, things I plan don't come to fruition or whatever it is, that's when you start tapping. And then when you can't say, can't say I will, because the words get stuck in your mouth, that's when you start tapping. Who found that? Who found that sort of objection? Who found that saying I will was powerful? Yeah very very different now the challenge is there's still the parts of you that object that need to be brought out but there's there's a process of of treating those parts and then there's the manifestation side don't spend all of your time on one side don't ignore one side but don't spend all of your time on one side now where do you go from here my suggestion is that you go away and reflect on your goals you probably you're a bunch of goal setters anyway but I'm not sure how many of you have actually used EFT as part of that process. To deal with the blocks to your possibilities before you even start writing. And then do a splurge. And give yourself permission even then to write stuff that you know you probably won't do. Or you know may not be possible. But you know, it is possible. The challenge is, which of those things are you going to give your heart to? I actually think everybody has a goal in their heart. They have a vision of what they really could be. The challenge is they don't know that they can be that. They can do that. You know, and I love the, the Wizard of Oz because he didn't really give them anything they didn't have, did he? It was just a signification thing. We'd love to do that for you, but you know what? You can do it for yourself. You don't need me to do that. You do, however, have to overcome this thing of like, I can't go ahead with doubt. I have to be there now in order to be there. Well, the reality is if you create a thing out here that you're going to need to grow into that sort of person to manifest that. And along the way, you're going to meet some, some good people like we've met here. Thank you very much for, for being with me. And you're... Uh... <laughs> <laughs>